Nehemiah chapter 6. Now we've dealt with the last chapter, we dealt with the inner problem. People mortgaged their lands, the, the nobles and the rulers were, you know, giving them nice little deals and interests, and they were just running broke. We had a break from the outer enemies, we had an inner enemy. Now we got the inner enemy taken care of, and guess what? You got the outer enemy. And Paul says, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Just because you're saved doesn't mean your life is going to be hunky-dory. There's a great possibility that if you decide to live for the Lord, you may have 365 days times how many years you live of nothing but trouble. And to tell a person who just got saved, who's in a wheelchair, one day you're going to step out of that wheelchair, no, that's, that's a lie. And to tell a Christian who's walking around, oh, you're going to be, no, you may end up in a wheelchair. Problems are a source of life. And then to see that thing in the back of Jeeps to say, you know, life is good, that's a lie. Because let me ask you something before we get to Nehemiah, we look at the outer trouble. Without God, without Jesus Christ, tell me where life is good. Life is good only with the Lord. Now it came to pass when Sanballat, here's his knucklehead again. You say, why doesn't God just kill this knucklehead? Because he doesn't. Why doesn't God just, these people who do wrong and, and give Christians bad names, why doesn't, because God doesn't. But to know one day they'll face either judgment, whichever one they're going to be at. Sam Ballot will be in judgment one day. And to them, he's going to cause trouble. And Tobiah and Gisham the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein. Breach means holes, problems, somewhere where it could be penetrated. In other words, they're doing a job that is fit, and it's, remember they were making fun, you know, if a fox comes up against it, you know, it's going to fall down. No, sorry. And that there was no breach left therein, though at the time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. So this is before chapter 3. Now you see, Nehemiah is not, Chronicle, chronicle order. In chapter 3, we learned that they built this section, they set up the gates there up, put the beams there up, boom, 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 boom. Or, Nehemiah is saying, my section, I haven't done it yet. He may not got a report from everywhere. But I would seem that would be that would be doubtful because here's the enemy. I would think that Nehemiah would want to know, at least get a report every night or every morning. Okay, what are you guys doing? What's going on here? What do you need? How much men you need? They're not doing this job half awkward. They're doing it foolish for God. In the fullness of God, all right, you need more help. We got some guys over here. They're almost, we'll send them over. I mean, listen, I think Nehemiah is doing this in a full reliance of God. I think he knows what's going on. So, again, we may be out of order. We may be before chapter 3 as we're reading. And Sanballat and Tobiah and Ger I mean, here they are. They were there before chapter 3. It just might be just a conti you know, continuation of different time that these guys are at it. They're at it. They're at it. They're at it. That Sanballat and Gershom sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Oh No. I like that. Oh No. All right, stop right there for a minute. Sanballat and Gershom, they, they come to Nehemiah himself. Says, come on, let's go in this village over here. Oh No. Let's talk. Now, 
I don't know what the Hebrew word is for oh no. But oh no is a great English word. It gives you oh no. I don't think you would get that in the Hebrew. And to finish it, but they thought to do me mischief. They were going to get Nehemiah off by himself, and they were going to do something to him, kill him or what have you. There's one thing, one Bible thing that you learn from Joseph, and as I'm learning to be a, a, a minister of the gospel and all that, you do not do things alone. Especially this day and age, you need a witness, you need someone to back you up, because they'll send anybody, put any charge on you. The Christians too. Even though Paul writes to the Corinthian church and says, you know, you guys ought not be going to court against each other. Don't think just because, you know, it's a Christian, you got to watch out for the Christians too. But here's the enemy. And I sent messengers unto them. He would not even go himself. I have no time for you guys. Let me cheeky, go over there and tell that guy to shut up. I got work to do. Say, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease where I leave it and come down to you? <coughs> you know what? This is sorry to say. As we're doing the great work of God on the streets, passing out gospel tracts, witnessing to people, there are going to be some people like, you know what? You're not worth it. You don't want the truth. All you're doing is taking our time. All you're doing is preventing the great work from being done. Paul says he acknowledged them two times. And they won't listen. You call them for either. There'll be people on the street. You'll say, well, why didn't you talk to him? Why didn't you? Do I've already dealt with that guy several times. He doesn't. He's just there to fool around. And we probably know people already from downtown. Well, oh, here comes that guy. He tried to get him off. We had a guy the other day. We were talking to a bunch of young guys. And this guy comes up. Well, you just say this prayer. Like, oh, come on. Get out of here. Just get out of here. I've been in every single church. We can almost say we've been in every single church, but we've been out of those churches because of doctor. I wonder why that guy's been out of the churches. There are some people in your life you're going to come across as you do the great work of God. You know what? I did what I was supposed to. It's between you and the Lord now. There are some people you can't help. There are some people that God puts you in your way. To, you know what? They're just the enemy. And Satan will put them in your way just to waste your time. I've been that route many a time. I used to fight, you know, why? How did how did Noah get all the animals on the ark? Where did Adam? I mean, where did uh, Cain get his? What? I used to fight those questions. Now it's. I used to fight the morons when they come to the door and the jade. I don't fight them. A lot of times they've been well versed on people like me. Maybe I should, but you, you just the Bible says don't answer a fool according to their folly. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort. Four times. Come on, man, let's go over to oh no, let's talk, will you? And four times he said no. You're gonna keep coming, you know. Like I said, Paul said, it's it the close of one of his books, near the end of the chapter, he said, listen, you deal with them twice. And if they don't listen, they're a heretic, it's it. You either, the Bible says, you're either going to be a seed planter or you're going to be a waterer. After that, it's God. And I answer them after the same manner. Then sent Sam Ballot, his servant, unto me in the like manner the fifth time. 
with an open letter in his hand. So this, these letters have been closed. No one knows what they are. Now he sends for the fifth time this guy, and, and this guy can read the letter. Where it is written, it is reported among the heathen. Well, that's not God's people. It's going to be reported a lot of times among the heathen. And Geshemu said it. All right, he puts a name down. That thou and the Jews think to rebel. Yeshumu said, you know, you guys are going to rebel. For which cause thou buildest the wall. This is why you build the wall. You want to rebel. Well, they've already, unless this is out of order, out of chronicle order, they have not gone to the king yet. They have not found the royal decree yet. And they're still, hey, you guys are just doing this rebellion. This, and it looks like it's out of chronicle order because we've already seen a decree where they they found the role and they found out Cyrus said, yeah, go build it. And anybody stops the work, they let their house be a dunghill. But right now, that thou mayest be their king, according to these words. You know, you're going to be the king of this area, Nehemiah. He's saying Nehemiah is doing this for rebellion against Babylon, against, rebellion against the people, so Nehemiah could set himself up king over the Jews. That's what they're saying. Or Gershom, whatever his name is. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem. You got your own prophets here. You've hired your own prophets. Saying there is a king in Judah. These prophets say there's there's a king in Judah. Nehemiah is the king. That's what... And now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. We're going to tell the king. Someone's going to go tell the king. That's hers. Come now therefore and let us take counsel together. If you come meet me, I we won't tell the king what uh, Gashumu said. I'm trying to blackmail him. And BC 445, according to Usher, back blackmail was going on back then too. Nothing new under the sun. And the reason why he said, you know, listen, you come with me, we'll take care, because he's going, he wants to kill Nehemiah. Then I said unto him, saying, There are no such things done, you liar, as thou sayest, but thou feignest, which means lie. You know what feignest means? It means to pretend to something that is not so. It's funny because feignest is where, I forget the king of Israel, he sends his wife, he says, Feignest thyself to be another woman. Feignest is a great word that you use for Hollywood. You know, when your name is something else and you call yourself something else. When you're something as an occupation, but you say you do something else. Huh? Make believe. You know, you even take someone like Tom Cruise, that's not even his real name. If Tom Cruise doesn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior and repent of his sins, he's going to be acquired to give an account of all the faintness that he's done in Hollywood. The race car driver he was, the bartender he was, and all the movies he said that he was, that he wasn't, but he's a faintness. He's a hypocrite. And then all the different names that he went under that wasn't his name. And all the different women that he kissed that was not his wife. And all the times that in the script, well, he lives in Montreal. No, you don't live in Montreal. Well, I live in Santa Fe, Texas. No, you don't live there. Isn't it great that the great white throne judgment is when time ends, eternity begins? Because, listen, God is going to call all these scripts. Now, let me ask you a question about this faintness. I love this word. Do you think it's okay for a Christian whose name is is Tom, and in the movie, his name is Fred, and in real life, he's a carpenter, but in the movie, he's a policeman. You think God, you think you're going to give account to that? 
Do you think God really goes for a famous kind of movie? And it's a Christian movie. We're trying to get the love of Jesus out there. When Jesus said in John 8, 44, that the father of lies is Satan. And when you can find in the Bible three or four times that where it says God cannot, will not, is unable to lie. So when you've got somebody in your children's group and he dresses up like a Bible character and says his name is the Bible character and he's nothing like the guy, that's a lie. How dare you call yourself Joseph? How dare you call yourself Paul? How dare you call yourself Moses when you're not? And you are a liar. Oh, white little lies, pink little lies, polka dot little lies. A lie is a lie. Out of thine own heart. It come out of the heart. Heart in the Bible, it's not that thing that goes bump, 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 bump. Heart is your motive. Why did you really do it? For they all made us afraid. Christians should not be able to be afraid. Two o'clock in the morning, you sniff smoke in your house where you're laying at. You better be afraid. <laughs> it's not to say, oh, no, okay, go back to sleep. Now, what you do with your fear. These letters, these guys put fear into the Jews, God's people. They're going to go tell the king a bunch of lies. What are we going to do? The lies must have been very, very, um, I'm trying to think of what, make it sound like the truth, persuasive. If they feared it, maybe these guys are really, they, maybe they hired somebody to write these letters. Maybe somebody hired to, to say these words to persuade. And maybe they're thinking, you know what, maybe the king will believe it. Why would they be afraid? Because it's not the truth. It's not the fear that that's what they're doing. It's a fear that the king's going to believe those liars. And there's going to be times in your life you're going to deal with people and you're going to be afraid. You know what? If they keep on opening up their big fat mouth, someone's going to believe it. But God and Jesus Christ knows the truth. Their hands shall be weakened from the work that is being not done. Now, therefore, O oh God, strengthen my hands. God, you need it step in. Even I'm afraid. Afterwards I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Delilah, the son of Methibio, who was shut up. That don't mean shut up as in, you know, someone's talking, you say shut up, that means they were closed in. The door was closed, locked up. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. And let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. Okay, now guess what? The letters didn't work. Going to tell the king what you guys are not going to do didn't work. I'll tell you what. Nehemiah, come here. I know somebody's going to get you. And what you need to do is you and I need to go in that temple and close up those doors. Because they're going to come and get you. Because they're going to slay thee. Get him inside that temple and have him kill him right there in the temple. I'm going to show you something else in here the Catholic Church does. There is right there asylum in the church building. You know, if you're a criminal and if you step into the church... We're there to protect you. That's where it is right there. That's where it comes from. That's why Joab ran to the horns of the altar. Because I can get, I can get you know, freedom. I can get, get out of hell free card. I can get away with it. And I'm touching the horns. And Solomon says, no, 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 no. You're a murderer and you need to die. 
And yet, 2013, these people running these churches and the pastors and the priests and the monkeys and the morons get it. We'll protect them. You say, what if a criminal came into your church and seek asylum? 911, what's your mercy? Hi, I got this guy here. You need to arrest him. He needs to go before a judge. And a judge or a jury needs to declare that guy is innocent or he's guilty. That's the Bible way. You ever hear of a church that stands for a criminal inside their building won't turn them over to the authorities? They violate Romans chapter 13. And I said, should such a man as I flee? And who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. I'm not. Why would I go in there for? First of all, I don't belong in there. Second of all, shut up. Third of all, get out of here. I'm safe with the numbers of my people, the Jews. You're not going to do nothing. You're going to wait for me alone. You keep on wanting to get me alone. Uh-uh. Sorry. That's what Joseph's, uh, that's what Joseph's employer's wife wanted. He, she wanted Joseph alone. And she got him alone one day. And then turned around and lied on him. Lied as in total lie. I mean, lie as in lie on him. I'll be careful what I say. And lo, I perceive that God has not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me. For Tobiah and Shambhalat had hired him. Uh-oh. You mean a guy that can come saying, I'm a man of God, and God told me to tell you this? Yeah, it's throughout the Bible. There's a guy that went to uh, up north in Israel. He proclaimed against the altar, 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 and then the, the, the king's hand withered up, and, and God told him, you know, he healed the hand up. The altar fell to pieces, and God told him to don't go back. Leave. And this prophet came and said, go tell the prophecy, you know, God spoke to me and told me to bring you into my house, give you a meal and all that. And then the lying prophet, right in the middle of the meal, said, I told you not to come here. Now you're going to die. And there's one thing I've seen lately is the fact that, you get a guy, oh, the Lord's been working on my heart all week for this message. Really? You mean God has spoke to you all week about this message so you can transliterate to something else? God said that to you. You are a liar, liar, pants on fire. Don't say just because God told me or I prayed this prayer. Or, you know, listen. You better try the spirits, John says. See what they are of. Therefore was he hired. Hireling. What did Jesus say about the hireling? When the trouble comes along, he's going to run away because he doesn't care for the sheep. You got that, right? From John chapter 10 and Nehemiah chapter 6, you got, what the, you got the definition of a hireling. Nehemiah told you in hireling, this, this guy is being paid by the enemy. There's a lot of men in the pulpits of the world today that are hirelings of the enemy of Satan. Listen, you can buy a reverend. You can buy a doctor title. You can run around America saying, I'm the reverend so-and-so and shut my people free. And you need to shut up. You know, the, the Reverend Michael Luther King Jr. You'd be surprised to find out where he is today. You know, I, I there's been a lot of preachers. You'll be surprised to find out where their preacher ended up.
You'd be surprised on how many people won't go up in a rapture today. I'll tell you one thing. God lighted my eyes on one big thing, I'm telling you. It's like this Twinkie thing. Oh, the Twinkies are back! The Twinkies are back! They're smaller Twinkies. They're not made by the same company. And they're going to probably charge you more. It's an imitation. How I got off on that. And they hired that I should be afraid. And do so. And sin. And that they might have matter for an evil report. That they might reproach me. So let's look at this here for a minute. This guy is hired that should be afraid and do so and sin. Oh, they weren't going to kill Nehemiah. Because had they killed him, what sin would Nehemiah have been in? He would have been dead. You can't sin when you're dead. All right, let's read on. That they might have matter for an evil report. Uh-huh. They were trying to get Nehemiah off by himself and get him to do something that would not abstain from all appearance of evil. They had something in mind to catch Nehemiah, to catch him in an act by his people or by somebody that said, Nehemiah did that? With who? And you saw it with your own eyes? How many of you people saw it? Four of us, and the scriptures say, out of the mouth for two or three, we got four people that saw Nehemiah. Did you see that? I've heard of three preachers in their life. Get called to go over a woman's house to witness to him and find out the woman, two of them and the woman was a harlot. One, the guy walked in the room and the woman's completely undressed and just turn around and leave. Don't even get yourself in those mad. Somebody comes along and say, listen, you know, I want to talk to you about Jesus and all that. Let's step into this bar over here. Let's step into it. No. Abstain from all appearance of evil. That's not what the Christian is teaching today. That's not what they're doing. They were not going to kill Nehemiah. They were going to destroy his reputation. And that's just as worse as death. Had they destroyed Nehemiah's reputation, even just by a lot, do you think his name would have been in the book? How would the king think, whatever this thing was, we're not told what it was, but what would you think the king would have thought? Nehemiah was what? <laughs> you better call that boy back over here. He's going to face criminal charges. He's saying it will never happen. What happened to Joseph? What sin did he do to go to jail? What did he do? In the eyes of God, absolutely nothing. But it looked like, it looked like. And listen, you can get a shady jury today in this country, tis a be, one nation under whatever God you want to be, for justice for all. And they'll hire anybody to go against you. Heck, in America 2013, you can have a jury of your peers tell you innocent, not guilty, and the whole country get upset and want your blood. You've got to be careful in your life. You don't get caught with the opposite sex alone. So I don't like when churches hug each other. Not this day and age. 
You don't go somewhere where you don't belong. I don't care if you if you gotta go potty, and the only place is a bar. You better go out in the woods. I've done that. I'll tell you one thing. It's amazing what God will do. While you saying, listen, I'd rather go out in the woods or have an accident than go in that place. The people know I'm a Christian. Well, amazing you find a porta potty. I'll tell you what God did. That shouldn't even been there. They're trying to ruin his 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 testimony. They're trying to ruin his test uh, his uh, uh, repetition. And brother, when that's ruined, that's it. You, you're gone. You don't have to commit the crime. Listen, Jesus said, whoever looks upon a woman to commit the, uh, the the lust out there in his heart has already committed adultery with him. You don't have to do it. And you're charged. My God, think upon Tobiah and Sanballat according to these their works. And on the prophet Tis, Nodiah, oh, they got a woman. Where did she come from? You think maybe she was involved in the scheme? And the rest of the prophets, well, there were more than one. That would have put me in fear. In fear of what? Losing his reputation. Ruining his testimony. Ruining his character. By what? By being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Listen, you could be hitchhiking down the road, have somebody pick you up, and say, listen, I'm going to the 7-Eleven, uh, just stay in the car for a minute, I'll be right out. You in there, guy goes in there, pulls out a gun, shoots the clerk, takes the money, jumps in the car and drives off, you are accessory to the crime. You say, where do you find that? That would have been happened to Nehemiah. Wrong place at the wrong time. So the wall was finished in the 20th, 20 and 5th day of the month, Elu, in 52 days. Now we're at chapter 3. Don't think your Bible is always in a chronicle order. It's not. Some places are, some places are not. I'll show you where it's not. Matthew records the birth, the life of Jesus. Mark records the birth and life. Listen, Jesus wasn't born in Matthew's time and lived and died and was born during Mark's time, lived and died, and wasn't born and lived in Luke's time and didn't live and die in John's time. And you'll find in the accounts of the four Gospels, wait a minute, this story is over here, but in this Gospel it's over there. Well, this story is not even in that Gospel, but this story is four times in the Gospel. The Bible says that you've got to rightly divide in your studying. And it came to pass that when, our, when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that was about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. You remain faithful to God and what God wants you no matter what. In the end, they're going to have to say it was only God that did it. Now, if we remain faithful to the Lord Terry's 20 more years, we go down the streets every week for 20 years, tired sometimes, maybe we don't want to sometimes, somebody say, you know what, it's, they believed in the God that they did. But if we give up, now there may be people back in Norwich, Connecticut, thinking maybe we gave up. What do you think God said? No, they moved. <laughs> Who said that? 
Hey, maybe they move. Where did I get that idea from? They must have moved on. Sometimes I, I see those Connecticut license plates every once in a while. I just wonder if it was somebody. I, whoa! I know a bunch of idiots that were doing that back in North. Yeah, we're the same idiots. <laughs> we just moved on. As I said, I'm sorry. I did. I should have. We should have had the last days we were there last week. We should have signed saying we're moving on. There are probably people that think we quit. We told people we're moving to Florida. More in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. For there were many in Judah sworn unto him. Men of who? Men of who? Judah. Were sworn unto who? The enemy. You got in your church, you got spies for Satan. Don't think everybody in your congregation just loves the Lord Jesus Christ and is saved and glory to God. There are people inside Judah that have sworn themselves to the enemy. And they were passing letters and notes back and forth. And don't underestimate the power of the enemy. Don't underestimate the power of the church today. Listen, I'm going to tell you something right now. What happened in the recent church over here? I was hurt very much. I was discouraged very much. It took energy out of me. I couldn't believe the things that had happened, the things that had resulted in my life from a church. I needed that lesson. From a church. From Christians. These guys are Judas. I mean, they're one of the twelve sons of, of Israel. Of Abraham, Isaac. They could rightly say we were Jews. We are Israelites. Rightly say it. And do you think these guys are going to be in, be in heaven? Or new, the new earth? They're going to be in hell. You tell me where in the Old Testament there was an offering that you sold out your brethren. <laughs> there was none like adultery or murder. There is no offering. Oh, you know, I sold out my brethren and I could bring a couple calves and pigeons. No, there was none. You died and went straight to hell. Now today there are people who say, I'm a Christian. And they ain't. They had it worse than Nehemiah. They had it worse than the Old Testament because they could be blood Jews and still be the enemy. Today they can sing power in the blood and they ain't got nothing in the power of the blood. How many Christians sing sweet hour of prayer and they don't pray? When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Yeah, let's sing. Imagine, it wouldn't be great that if the Lord Jesus Christ, every church is all of a sudden, they, they just sing when the roll is called up yonder, just by an amazing, wonderful thing that's called up, and that's when the rapture happens, and people just say, when the roll is... Guess I won't be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I won't be there. When the roll is under, I won't be there. <laughs> Because he was, oh, wait a minute, did I skip? For there was many in Judah sworn unto him, because he was the son-in-law of Shenachaniah, the son of Ara, the son of Jonathan, had taken the daughter of Meshulam, the son of, look at this. 
There was the uncle, there's uncle, the uncle, the bloody uncle, the uncle. I didn't even, I lost track of who, who this, the, I can't get cousins and family and all that. But it was a marriage thing. You know, some in 50% of the cases, most marriage will destroy a life. Not sure, no, you can't be say 50%. Maybe half the marriage. There are marriages out there that will destroy at least one half of the marriage. If not both halves. And they reported his good deeds before me. And other my words to him. And Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear again. There are some people that spoke right, but it doesn't do nothing. The enemy doesn't care. Matter of fact, they'll probably use it against them. That closes day. 